Good morning, church, and I welcome you to our Sunday morning worship here on the very first Sunday in Lent. So we have arrived at this penitential season that prepares our hearts and helps us to remember that Christ died on a cross and rises again to set us free with eternal life. I have one quick announcement that I do want to share this morning. I was notified uh, earlier uh, last week that uh, the camp, like Luther Ridge, Luther Ranch, Luther Rock, they wanted to notify churches and let people know that uh, the camps are going to be open. They're at least they're planning and working towards that for this summer so that families could begin to make uh, plans and possibly reservations for youth and, and other adults too to attend. So I just wanted to make you clear on that. You can find uh, a lot of that information online. But this is just a quick reminder <clears throat> so that you are, you are aware what is happening and some opportunities that you will have for the summertime. Well, let us continue now with our Sunday morning worship as we listen to God's Word. And our first reading today comes from the ninth chapter of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And here ends our first reading. The second, uh, our, our psalmody for today is Psalm 25, the first 10 verses. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. And all your paths, O Lord, are steadfast, love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. And here ends the reading of our psalm. Our second reading for today is from 1 Peter, the third chapter. <clears throat> Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. 
He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. And here ends the reading of our second lesson. And now the Holy Gospel comes to us from uh, Mark, the very first chapter. <clears throat> In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the waters, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time was fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as we have finished with our scripture reading, I would like to invite our children, if you will join me, if you will gather around now where you can see, I'd like to talk with you for just a few minutes. I have something, first of all, I want to show you, and I hope you can see this. Can you see that I am holding a ring? And this is a very special ring. Do you, do you know where this ring goes? It fits on my finger on my left hand, just like that. This ring is very important to me because when Mrs. Cook and I were married, we exchanged rings, and our rings are a sign of a promise that we made to one another. When people get married, often they will exchange rings like this, and then when the people wear that ring, they remember that they have made a promise on their wedding day to love one another. They make a vow and a promise to love one another forever. Oh, I'm proud of this wedding ring, and I'm glad that I can wear it on my hand. And every time I look at it, I do remember that I love Mrs. Cook. She's special to me. Well, we all make promises, don't we? Um, we make promises. Maybe you made promises like, uh, Mom and Dad, when I finish playing with my toys, I'm going to pick them up and put them away in my bedroom. Or maybe you've made a promise uh, that you're going to, when you come home from school, right away, you're going to finish up your homework. We don't always keep our promises, do we? Sometimes we make promises and we break them. I wanted to tell you this about God. God makes promises too. And God always keeps his promises. He never breaks them. When God makes a promise, you can believe and trust that he will keep it and he will follow through with that promise. You know, in our Bible story, the very first one I read today, it's about Noah and the ark. And I am hoping, I'm sure you have heard somewhere along the way about Noah and the ark. If you remember, Noah, uh, God came to Noah and said, Noah, build a big boat. I mean, huge. It took him a long time to build it. And then when the boat was built, God told Noah to collect animals, a male and female animal and bird of every kind on the earth, and to put it in the ark because he was going to flood the earth. You see, people back then had begun to make some very 
poor choices, very bad choices. And God said that he was going to flood the earth to cleanse it from all this wrongdoing. And so Noah and the animals boarded the boat and the rains came and they floated for a long time before the waters disappeared. But when the waters disappeared and Noah and all the animals were able to come out of the boat, you know what they saw up in the sky? A great, big, beautiful rainbow. And God told Noah that he was setting that rainbow up in the sky and it was going to be a sign that would always help God to remember that he would never, ever again flood the earth. He would never destroy the earth in the way that he did with all that water. God said, this is my promise to you. This is my covenant or a promise that I will never, ever flood the earth. And so every time the rainbow appears in the sky, God would look at it. And he'd say, yes, I'm never going to flood the earth again. God keeps his promises. And every time you see a rainbow, you think about how God keeps his promises. And one of the best promises God's ever made to you and to me is that he says he will love us forever. And on that, you, you can bet your life. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for making promises that you keep, and especially the promise of your love. We thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for our moms and dads, I invite you to join me as we consider God's word for this day. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we ask that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every heart that hears these words, that you will make it acceptable in your sight, for it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> On uh, May 23rd of this year, Margie and I are going to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. Wow, we have 40 years gone so quickly. You know, when you have been together that long, you, you have many, many shared memories and maybe maybe not call them memories but actually uh, what you what you have here are a lot of shared experiences which you inevitably remember differently and those of you who are in relationships i think you know exactly what i'm talking about now, this situation of us remembering things differently, well, it sometimes provides a lot of, shall we say, opportunity for vigorous conversation, which usually begins with, that's, that's not what I recall. You say we ate dinner at their house that evening? No. Or... Maybe, no, 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 no. That took place while we were on that trip driving to, to Pennsylvania. Uh, it can make for some very interesting conversation, can it not? It's a good thing, a very good thing, that we can be sure that God's memory is a lot better than yours and mine. It is clearer. It is more precise. And most importantly, it is, it is one to be trusted. After all, God has promised that when I see the bow in the sky, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant. And what is that covenant? Again, God speaks that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. It's from our Old Testament lesson for today. Most people, especially those of us who were, were raised in the church or maybe in synagogue, we know the story of Noah and the flood. 
And most of us think of God's promise, uh, at least fleetingly, we'll say, when we see that rainbow up in the sky after we've had a rainstorm. But how many of us really remember that the bow was intended as a sign to God and not to us? How many remember that the bow is primarily intended to help God remember God's own promise, God's covenant, not to destroy all flesh by way of flood? I know I didn't. And even though I have studied this particular lesson and this, this scripture, the story of Noah and the flood, um, I know I forget, and I remember it differently. When I was thinking about this, these scripture lessons for this particular Sunday here in Lent, our first Sunday, I, I remember several quotes somewhere along the way, so I stopped and I, I looked them up. I want to share these quotes with you now. One is by novelist, professor, an occasional scholar of the New Testament. His name is Reynolds Price. And here's what he states, and I quote, One sentence beyond all else that people yearn to hear in all of the Bible stories is this. The maker of all things loves and wants me. The maker of all things loves and wants me. Don't you want to hear that? I know I do. And along the same line, Professor Liston Mills of Vanderbilt Divinity School states uh, a very similar opinion, and so I share that one with you. Quote, all theological questions boil down to one thing. Can God be trusted? End quote. The story of the flood, you see, is a story that, that tells us, reminds us, that God indeed can be trusted. It's a story about the issues of human sin and divine wrath and our fragile vulnerability in the face of the world's unpredictable power and violence, and the possibility that God can repent God can change his own mind, and in the future, remember a promise that he has made to be merciful to his people. Our psalm today, uh, it has the psalmist um, doing what we're talking about, remembering God's promise, to remember, and in, in a sense, as he repeats it, sort of like holding God to that promise. Go back and look at it. Verse 6 and 7 use the word remember three times. It is not by accident that the writer first calls upon God to remember your compassion and love. It's like uh, the writer of the psalm is saying, hey God, uh, look at the rainbow, check it out, remember your promise. And then the psalmist invites the Lord to remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. And finally, God is, is asked to remember the person, and not their deeds, but the person in light of God's own, God's own steadfast love and goodness that he holds for his creation. Both the flood story and the psalm, they reflect a, a very consistent theme that runs throughout the entire Old Testament. The thread of God's compassion, God's mercy, God's love, and how it outweighs God's judgment and wrath and, and condemnation. And remembering, you see, is the key. That is the key. Both God and us remembering God's promises to us 
God's covenant of grace with us. Pastor and uh, former bishop, bishop of the United uh, Methodist Church, Will Willimon, used to say that in preaching, because he's done a lot of preaching um, workshops and things through the years, he used to say that in preaching, we do not so much need to be told as we need to be reminded. I know I need that. I forget. I need to be reminded of God's grace and love. And in 1 Peter, our second lesson for today, we are reminded of the basic facts about the cross of Christ. Uh, when, when you hear these words, it, it almost sounds like a, a litany or, or, or like a creed. For we hear these phrases, suffered for sins once for all brought us to God, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. That's what's in the scripture text. And in the midst of this familiar and almost, as I called it, a creedal language that Peter writes there, uh, there's there's buried there, I guess that's the best way to put it, there is buried there a reference to Noah and the flood. There are peculiar words uh, also in this text about a proclamation to the spirits in prison. And the flood waters being like our own baptism. And while this particular passage, this, uh, this section of, of 1 Peter, has always been open to a lot of interpretation. It seems that Peter was in some way trying to say that God had not forgotten those who died in the flood back in Noah's time. Those who in former times, as it states, did not obey. With Christ, as the text tells us, descending into hell to invite those languishing there to repent and believe in the good news, it's like God closes the circle and indeed makes Christ a sign that God's love is for all people, all people, and for all time. You know, after 40 years, wow, they've gone quick. After 40 years together, Margie and I do, yeah, we do have trouble remembering, remembering the same details of our life together or remembering the same details in the same way. We have some interesting conversations over it. But I'll tell you this, we always remember we remember that we love each other. That's what's important. We love each other and we want the best for each other. And so it is with God and us. You know, sometimes, sometimes we remember the story of God's love differently. We we forget some of the details that others think are important or we we harp on things that nobody else cares about but but underneath it all you and i can be sure of one very very important fact the maker of all things you and me loves and wants us. And that, my friends, that's good news. I'm going to repeat one last line from our Old Testament lesson. Put it away in your head. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God remembers. What a blessing for you and me. 
Amen and Amen. I now invite you to join me in the prayers of intercession for one another, for our church, and for this world. Remembering and relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all that are in need. Gracious God, in Jesus, our Savior, your realm has come very near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your promise of salvation. Remind us that we are people of your covenant and therefore safe in your heart. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord God, you have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect us and all the earth's creatures from destruction. Help us to see your glory and the wonder of your creation and empower us to be good stewards of the gifts you give. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Father, all your ways are filled with steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may, may maintain justice for the lowly and mercy for those in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord God, even in the wilderness of difficult and trying times, you have promised to be with us. Bring to our hearts and minds reminders of your tender care and provision. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing, comfort, and strength to all who suffer, especially those caught in the horrors of the pandemic, those waiting for vaccines, the hungry, the homeless, and for first responders and the medical community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And God, our Father, in the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live out the call you have placed upon us. Set us free from our fears and embolden us in our serving. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In loving God, in baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness. Keep before us the promise that we, like those who have gone before us, will come into the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And may God bless you this week. 
and uh, encourage you and remind you in your prayers to, to be praying for one another, for the congregation as they prepare now for uh, Pastor John Steyerwalt to be coming in March. Uh, and just lift up those who are in need and find those ways that you can serve God. Take care. God bless.